Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. Glad you're here today. We're going to talk about some things I don't normally talk about on this channel, but this is why I get in trouble. This is why, um, you know, this is what sets my homestead channel apart from other homestead channels. That's what we're going to talk about today right here. We talk about things sometimes that just don't get talked about uh, because the powers that be on YouTube and other places of social media don't like it when you talk about certain things, things that make, you know, the average liberal uncomfortable, the people with blue hair sitting behind keyboards and, uh, you know, at Google and YouTube, they, they don't like it when you talk about certain things that make them uncomfortable. And that's really the realities of life. The things that are the realities of life, they don't like you talking about. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I don't have my play button today, even though I'm over 100,000 subscribers. We'll get to that in another video um, coming up soon. Uh, it seems even Craigslist is now shadow banning people, uh, homesteaders, in fact, specifically people who try to sell livestock that people that you raise, you know, for food, you know, for food, because the only acceptable food is the food you get through a drive through today or at the supermarket. I mean, or, or that's delivered by Uber or wh whatever delivery service they got now going on today. That's that's where you get that's where food comes from. But see, when when you try to raise food for yourself or for others and you try to sell that, you know, like people have done for thousands of years, that makes the people with blue hair behind the computer keyboards at Google uncomfortable. And not only that, but now Craigslist. I, I just... The world has just gone nuts. We, we need a serious reset. We need some serious chlorine in the gene pool, you know, in order to keep humanity alive. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about, uh, yeah, these face masks um, starting off. I, someone gave this to me. Um, it was uh, at a store I had to go into, I had to go into and, and they're like, sir, you're not, we have to, we have to ask you to put this mask on. Otherwise you can't come in. And I, I it, normally I'd be like, bye. Uh, but I had to go into the store. I had to go in there. Um, uh, there was something I had to do. So I had to put the mask on, but I kept the mask cause I'll, you know, for posterity, I just, I want to show my grandkids one day, the insanity of humanity. What, what do I think about these masks? So I get, I get the emails and I know people out there, Zach, just put the mask on. Is it that hard that you, are you that prideful that you can't just put a mask on? What is wrong with you, Zach? You know what? This is a symbol. And I know some of you aren't going to like this argument. I don't care because I'm here to tell you about the realities of life. This is a symbol that they're using to try to tell you that they have control over your body. They have control over your body. And when they can, when they try to force you to put one of these things on or pass mandates or laws or edicts or whatever, they're telling you that they have control over your body. And the majority of the sheep put them on, you know, without question. But you'll say, Zach, you know, that's the, that's the same argument that the pro-choicers have. You know, it's my body, my choice. No, 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 no. See, that's someone else's body growing inside your body. Not the same. See, there's, this is my body my body and I have control over it because at some point they want to come to you and be like, you know what? You need to get this vaccine. No, 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 wait, no, my body. Well, see, they've already conditioned you to say, no, it's okay. You're going to do what we tell you to do. The vaccine you have to now take, you have to take this vaccine because it's not your body anymore. It's owned by the state. And I refuse to play that game. I absolutely refuse to play this game. Especially, now listen, here's the deal. If people were falling over dead left and right, so we, 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 I, I would seriously consider putting on the mask if I knew it really helped, okay? But it's not. We have a 0.0% mortality rate. It's 0 0.08, 0.05% mortality. Folks, this is ridiculous. And I know, I know people who have died from this. I know people, and I know you might know people who have died from this, but every single one of these people that I can tell, over 90% of them, according to the statistics I've seen online, and online, I get it, are people with secondary medical issues. People who had issues, like I, I, the, a health, supposedly healthy 34-year-old drops dead from COVID, but he had, heart, he had heart problems, he had heart flutters, he had heart issues. The, the, zero point, 99 point, Nine, 99.8, 99.5, whatever percent mortality rate. I'm sorry. I'm just not, it just does not make me want to put this mask on. 
I have a better chance of going out and get, dying in a car wreck today if I drove in the city, which I don't. I, it, no, this is what you asked me what I think. That's what I think. I've gotten the email. Zach, you know, what, what do you think about the whole mask thing? What do you think about the, you know, sh, uh, you know, what do you, what's, all, what's up with this COVID stuff? I think this thing is a scam. It's an absolute scam. It does not necessitate shutting down the government, shutting down our economy for this. It just doesn't. No, no. If, if we had a 50% mortality rate, if we had a, if we had a 70%, you know, survival rate, then, then we'd be, I'd be like, yeah, we, this is serious. We need, we, this is something, but this is not, this is not serious. They're telling you it's serious and you're so used to gobbling up whatever they tell you that, you know, and I'm not saying I mean, most of you, most of you are probably <laughs> woke, even though that phrase can go either way, but you know what I mean? Most of you get it, but so many people don't. Guys, we are headed towards, I believe, massive inflation. And right now, I, I just, you know, I, I'm giving my, giving you my thoughts. I don't normally do videos like this, but I, I just, people are asking what I think and um, how they can prepare. I haven't got so many emails, so a few emails from about that. I, I think we're on the cusp of either a deflationary or a inflationary event. Okay, a deflationary collapse or an inflationary collapse. And people don't know the difference between those things because we don't teach economics in our schools anymore today. A deflationary event is what happened in the 1930s. Okay, 1929, stock market crash, deflationary event, 1930s. A deflationary depression. There was no money. Remember that song, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? Because there was no money. Deflationary event. Inflationary event, we have not gone through one of those in this country, uh, to a massive hyperinflationary event. We have not experienced that in this country in recent memory, in, in the last hundred years or so, more, more than that. When you have lots of money, the money's not worth anything. That's where we're heading. That's where we've been heading. That's where I see probably is the most likely because you have everyone scared of a deflationary depression like we had in the 1930s. And so the federal... I mean, Ben Bernanke is on record saying we will drop money from helicopters if we have to. And I know he's not in charge anymore of the Fed. You have other people, but they all they all tow that same line. We are heading to what I believe is an inflationary, hyperinflationary depression, hyperinflationary uh, event. And those are that monster is much worse than anything else that you can possibly imagine. It's so hard to get out of unless the people in power do the hard choice of wiping the slate claim and going back to a gold standard or a silver standard of money. And that's hard. You Guys, be a student of history. That is hard. It's hard for people to do that because it means lots of suffering. It means that there's no, everyone wants to come out of a, a depression quickly. You know, what's the best way to do it? it there is no quick way to do it. It, it, you only come out of a situation like that through hard work and sacrifice. And we are a nation of people who do not know how to sacrifice. We do not know how to live without. I, I look at the, at, the, at the faces of people who tell, I tell them, you know, I heat my water for my shower. You know, I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a, either it's either heat on the propane stove or the wood stove. I heat my water for my shower and people look at me like I'm nuts. Because you don't know how to go without. It's it, I, I don't have an air conditioner in my house. Like right now, I have my, my, my little studio that I'm set up in here, and um, it's hot. Um, I do It's in the morning. I'm doing this video in the morning because I can't do it during the day. It's so hot. I don't have an air conditioner in my house. And people look at me like I'm nuts because you don't know how to go without. Most of humanity has lived throughout history without air conditioners. But today, it's something that you can't imagine not having. And so if these things are taken away from you, if, if some of the things that you enjoy, the luxuries in life are taken away from you, most people will, will not know how to deal with that. They won't know how to deal with it. And they'll simply go crazy. They'll simply just go nuts. <sighs> Folks, so here's where I see we're heading. I see we're heading for a, a massive inflationary event simply because people don't want the deflation deflationary events happen like that. They're quick, they're fast, and they're painful, absolutely painful. And so what you do to avoid that is you keep pumping in dollars and you have eventually what's called an inflationary event, And it, but it takes longer to happen. It doesn't happen instantaneously. It happens slowly over time. Again, being a student of history, you know these things. If you're a student of history, you know these. 
inflationary events happen slower. But as they as they progress, they get faster and faster, and that ball begins to roll down the hill quicker and quicker and quicker. And you begin to enter into what's called a hyperinflationary event. Right now, we're in a massive inflationary event. It's been happening for the last you know 20 years. And you see this. Uh, let me show you these charts here real quick. You can get these over at shadowstats.com. Shadowstats.com. The first chart you see here, this is what inf this is the real inflation. Everyone's going to tell you people who are, you know, who've gone through, you know, uh, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, whatever her name is, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez's uh, version of economics, because that's, that's what's taught in all colleges today, Keynesian economics. They're going to tell you inflation is about 1% right now. No big deal. Inflation is 1%. But actually, if we were going by a 1990 standard, today's inflation would be around 4%. 4%. But they're going to tell you it's around 1% or 2% right now. But if we were going by 1990 standards, it'd be 4%. Okay, that's 1990. If we went back further to 1980, today's inflation would be around anywhere from 6 to 12% based on where you're at in this chart. In this chart. This is 1980s base. See, they're moving the goalpost on how they calculate inflation. So people say, oh, that, that inflation right now says it's only 1% or 2%. Actually... If you were calculating inflation the way they did back in the 1980s, we're closer to a 6 to 12% inflation rate. And I'm telling you it's even higher than that. I'm thinking right now, based on what I'm seeing, and I'm going to show you real quick, uh, inflation right now is about 20%. And it's going to get worse because we're printing and we're printing and we're printing. We got off the gold standard in the 1970s. So by the 1980s standard of, of calculating inflation, we're about anywhere from 6 to 12%. <clears throat> but it's, folks, it's worse than that. It's worse than that. And so they keep moving the goalpost in order to hide the real inflation. So what is it at now? I I'm telling you right now, it's probably around 20%. And you see this by going to the store. So um, when we were uh, dealing with Jamie's cancer and we were, you know, uh, treating her, we bought, we were buying a lot of Kleenex. And I would go to the store and I would notice the Kleenex boxes had 200 Kleenex in them. The, you know, the Walmart great value brand Kleenex box. 200 sheets inside the box. And then one day I noticed I went to the store and I bought, because I was doing all the shop, grocery shopping. I noticed I go to the grocery, shop, grocery store and I would pick up a box, same box, supposedly, same price, maybe a little higher, a couple pennies higher, and it had 180 sheets in it. And then I would go back to the store. I went back to the store after a few months and I would get more. And it's now down to 160 sheets in your great value Walmart brand Kleenex box. 160. And they don't sell the 200 anymore. And it's the same price as the 200 was a few months back. Folks, that's inflation. And it's getting, it's, it's increasing and it, it's accelerating. You go to the store and you buy a Ritz box of Ritz crackers. And then about, you know, a few months later, six months down the road, you go buy another box of Ritz crackers. It looks like the same box, but it's actually smaller. And the price is the same or maybe a few pennies higher. Folks, that's inflation. It's hidden inflation. You go buy a, a thing of peanut butter. Okay. Six months later, you go buy the same thing of peanut butter. And the, the, the container is a little bit different. It's a little bit smaller. It's got a concave bottom now. So they're putting less peanut butter. Okay. It's got less peanut butter in it, but it's the same price. That's hidden inflation. The inflation that we're experiencing in this country, it's hidden from you, so you don't go nuts. And they're printing more dollars. And this stimulus thing, this COVID thing, is, the, is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back and puts us into, uh, at some point, into hyperinflation. That, that, that's going to continue to steamroll down that hill. It's going to fall down that hill. It's going to gain speed. It's going to accelerate. And boom, we're going to be into hyperinflation. And you're going to go to the store one day, and you're going to be like, why am I paying $100 for a loaf of bread? And then it's going to be, why am I paying $1,000 for a loaf of bread? Why am I paying $2,000 for a six or, or a, a, a dozen of a dozen eggs at the grocery store? Why am I paying $100,000 for that carton of eggs now? See, it accelerates. And if you don't think this can happen in this country, it can't. It's happened, it happens all throughout the world. Again, being a student of history, Weimar Republic, the, one of the best uh, examples of, of Weimar Germany was uh, 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 an instance back in the 1920s when times were good, back in the 1920s, 
you had this American businessman. It's a true story. American businessman. Some of you guys can track it down if you want to. American businessman goes into a hotel in Weimar, Germany. Things are good. And he uh, enlists a bellboy who helped him carry in his luggage. And, and uh, he, the, the American businessman said, hey, this, this kid's pretty bright. I'm, I'm going to have him help me out throughout the day. I need someone to run errands for me, take messages here, uh, here and there. Whoa, what happened to my... See, I got to get this thing figured out. Anyway... I need to get, um, I need, I'm going to have this boy run errands for me. And so at the end of the day, this, this little bellboy who he's hired from, uh, from the hotel to run errands for him and to do things throughout the city, you know, for an entire day, he, at the end of the day, he gives him a $20 gold piece, gives him a $20 gold piece. That bellboy keeps that $20 gold piece. Didn't sell it, didn't spend it, you know, didn't use it for anything. He just held on to it. He thought that was neat. He had never been given a tip so big. But he had helped this American businessman all day. And the businessman was so grateful and thought, hey, this is a bright kid. I'm going to give him a $20 gold piece as a tip. And he did. And he kept it. Enter a, f- a couple years later, Weimar, Germany. Hyperinflation. That same bellboy went into that hotel that went out of business and bought the hotel for the price of that $20 gold piece. That's hyperinflation. Go do some research on the history of the Weimar Republic in Germany before the rise of of the Germany that we all think about today. He bought the hotel for his tip that he got just a few years earlier for the $20 gold piece. And now he was now the owner of the hotel. True story. Go look it up. That is hyperinflation. That's where we're heading. That's exactly where we're heading. Amazing, amazing times. And what do I think about this COVID thing? I think it's a scam. Whether it's political related, I don't know. Whether it's trying to be used to unseat uh, the current president, I don't know. Uh, Whether it's some kind of conspiracy, and I know there's all kinds of conspiracy theories out there, you know, about this and where it's going, Agenda 21 and blah, 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 you name it. There's, I don't know. And you really, honestly, you don't either. You don't either, okay? I'm not going to let fear, you know, I'm not going to let fear take over, but I am going to plan because I have the ability right now to plan to do some things to help offset the pain. Folks, it's going to be in, it's going to be a, a giant crap sandwich and we're all going to have to take a bite. How big a bite depends on you and your decisions that you make now. You know, they say, I say crap sandwich, you know, some of you who are, uh, what's the, what's that movie from? You all know what I'm saying. We're all going to have to take a bite. How big a bite depends on you and the things that you do now to offset that pain. If you have medications that you absolutely need, I would start stocking up now. The medications that they say only ex- only last so long is a lie. Most of those medications last much longer than what the, the labels on there say. Okay. And, you know, uh, 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 you can get extra whenever you need to get the medications. Try to get one one set extra of those medications, and over time, those will add up, and you'll have those medications set aside. Um, um, food items, you know, beans and rice. I, I see all these people saying, "Hey, buy these storage foods. Buy the, those things are absolutely crazy expensive." And I know that. I mean, they're they're nice to have on hand if you have them for emergencies. But folks, your dollars will go much farther if you just buy beans and rice. Beans and rice, get some spices to go with it, have some oils, some, some oils and some uh, way to put butter, some fat in it, and, and you're, you're set. Um, I don't know what's going to be happening, but prepare now. Some things you do now, prepare a garden plot. Even if you're not having a garden this year, prepare a garden plot for the next year so that you have it ready to be able to put uh, uh, condition that soil so you can put seed in it. You know, buy some seeds, have some things set aside. Um you know, YouTube videos are great to learn from, but learning by experience, there's nothing like that. You, you, the, the best way to learn is always through experience. I don't, I have no idea what the future holds for all of us. And, and, and I don't know if I'm right in my thinking on any of this. I'm just giving you my opinion. <clears throat> and I'm basing this based because I love history. I love, I love history and I study history. And this is uh, history just repeating itself. We have failed to learn from the mistakes of countries and nations in the past who have basically issued fiat and that's worth nothing. The Romans, it goes all the way back to the Roman Empire. The Romans slowly began to take the silver out of their currency and eventually all they had was cl- clad coins. 
it was worth nothing. And they couldn't pay their armies with it because the armies didn't want it. They knew there was no silver in it. We want real money. And it's, it's over time and again. Why have we not learned from history? Because people's greed, who knows? There's lots of reasons. People's greed. Folks, I, you know, plan now. Plan now. I think um, this whole thing with the hydroxychloroquine, uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on in there about that too. I, I don't really know what the issue is with this thing. I know that hy- the hydroxychloroquine comes from a tree. It's a bark, okay? It's a medicine, ancient medicine people use for a, a long time. You can find it even in tonic water. It's called uh, uh, quinine. Hydroxychloroquine is tree bark from a certain tree that's medicinal. And 60 years ago, they were not, 60 years ago, the drug companies are not, were not what they are today. Always interested in money. How can I patent something? Making something up completely from scratch, you know, a chemical, a chemical brew, okay, and selling it for millions and billions of dollars. It's like aspirin. 60 years ago, the drug companies were not interested, all that interested in making, you know, crazy concoctions. They were actually interested in healing people 60 years ago. Aspirin. It's a tree bark. It comes from tree bark. It's simple. It's easy. It works. Hydroxychloroquine. It, it's been in use for almost 70 years, 65 years. It's tree bark. Okay. It comes from a tree. It works. Okay. My in-laws, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law and my wife all took it when they were overseas in Papua New Guinea. It, it was a treatment to prevent for prevention of, um, uh, what's the mosquito borne illness? Uh, malaria. It's a, it's a treat. They, they all took it. People have been taking this for decades. It's safe. It's fine. And why people are, it's because people want to make billions of dollars through this vaccine. That's, that's my opinion. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's my, that's my opinion. But it comes from a tree for crying out loud. Hydroxychloroquine is not going to hurt you. And I do have my tonic water. If someone here gets um, uh, COVID-19, it's no big deal. We'll drink that stuff. I got plenty of it. And we'll use it through a nebulizer to get into my lungs. And and we'll take our, you know, we'll, we'll, we, we eat healthy here anyway. We eat healthy. We stay healthy. We live healthy lives. And I know, you know, that's why it was such a shock to so many people when Jamie got cancer. Because like, man, you guys live healthy. Yeah, we do. We do. And I'm not scared. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live in fear. Just not. People want to know my opinion on things. There's my opinion on things. And I don't normally do these videos. And these are the kind of videos that get me in trouble. But that's okay. I don't mind making them because this is a real homestead. An American homestead. And Americans don't live in fear. All right. We're going to leave it at that. I really uh, appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit the like button before you go. That means a lot when you do that. And then also check out our uh, merchandise over at teespring.com. Uh, links in the description below. Also, you can get the Homestead Life shirts, lo- Homestead Life hats. I love prepping shirts are available. And, of course, the best-selling stupid should hurt shirts. Stupid really should hurt. And you can get those shirts uh, in the link in the description below. So check those out. And uh, I appreciate you guys um, sticking with our channel. Times are going to get tough. And um, I don't know what it's all going to look like, how it's all going to shake down, but I'm not going to live in fear. All right, guys. See you next time on American Homestead. Bye. Hey, guys. I'm happy to introduce an American Homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try.
Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>